since in the early 90s, we had 20 refineries. We have nine, soon to have eight, soon to have seven. And some of the data that's coming forward, even from the own Energy Commission consultants, is by 2040, we may have one, one refiner. The problem, John, is we still got 40 million people that drive 36 million cars and trucks every day. So demand is not decreasing. Supply is not increasing. Electricity, which is the chosen path, we do not believe, we believe in an all of the above energy strategy. Electricity is peace, but not all. That is not advancing anywhere at the pace that they had expected. So we have an absolute misstep of these curves of supply, demand, traditional oil and gas, jet fuel, diesel, and alternatives and renewables. They're not matched up at all. Right. And so now here we are. Here we are. Here we are. I, I, I uh, was talking to a, a policy expert recently who educated me that in the next generation, the next 20 years, power to supply California uh, to phase out, uh, you know, uh, carbon fuels would need to increase in terms of wind and solar by 75 times to actually meet the demand in California. Of course, that's completely unrealistic. And we do need a mix. We need a mix in California. We need a mix in the country. And of course, in the world. Follow up on this issue of importing tons of oil from other parts of the world that needs to be floated or trucked right into California. And tons of emissions happen when you float or you truck oil into California. Is that taken into account by California government that we're polluting the rest of the world? And then, of course, it just slides into our ports or on trucks. Yeah. And it's really good. Point, John. And the volumes are so large, we're really not even talking trucks. We're really talking marine vessels. We're talking tankers. We're talking tankers. And I think what's becoming apparent for legislators is they're beginning to understand, wait a minute, California is supposed to be a leader in climate change. And our plan is to import crude oil from 40 days away, put it on our tanker, increase greenhouse gas emissions. And oh, I'm supposed to be concerned about market volatility and price at the pump. Oh, wait a minute. That's going to cost more. So more greenhouse gas emissions, more cost to the consumer. This cannot be our plan. This is why I say we do not have a plan. That cannot be it. And then they're now beginning to wake up to what's happening in the ports. Much more congested ports, not able to take more vessel traffic when our strategy seems to be moving in that direction and we're nowhere prepared there either. So if you're constrained to import it in, you're constrained with existing refiners who are literally leaving the state. And just to note, John, we should talk about the crude oil production side. We should, I wanna I want to come to that, but I wanna make one point that I wanna talk about California actually being self-sufficient. I know we have a ton of crude underneath us in this state that we could access. But the irony of the current uh, climate policy in California across all industries that I observe is that California, in the example of, say, um, ag, let's grow stuff here, but let's not actually produce it here. Let's send it to Nevada. Let them have the factories and the jobs, do the emissions, and then send the product back to us on a truck. So we're fine with emissions happening somewhere else, but not in California, but we're exporting jobs. And I think the same thing's about to happen in the oil business, which is insane. So let's talk about this point you just made, which is we've got a ton of crude. I gather a lot of it's heavy. Why aren't we accessing the crude that we have in California? Thank you, John. And, and as I have told the media in the past, we have the biggest petroleum reserve of crude oil probably in the world, which is in Kern County. Hold it's on. in the Let's, reserves under the ground. I want to hear this again. You said the biggest reserves in the world. Well, certainly in the United States. We used to be like, you know, number three as a county. And now we're down to seventh and eighth. Not because the crude oil isn't sitting there, because the state of California won't let us access it. They won't issue they won't issue additional licenses yeah. to uh to, to drill. For new new well drill permits, basically. Right. And the reason for that is clearly politics over policy. So you have to make sure that you have complied with CEQA. We have the California Environmental Quality Act. We have. You have to make sure you've done all mitigation for any kind of impacts. 
we have. And so what's very frustrating is the members have done all of that, and yet the state refuses to give permits. This is a policy that has to reverse, not only because of the jobs you just referenced coming from the oil and gas production side and the fact that we don't have to pay more money to transport it here, but clearly the refiners in California, especially many of them, are geared to, to utilize Kern County crude, heavy or not. Their refineries were designed about it. Why wouldn't they be? It was in their backyard. So their preference is to have San Joaquin Valley crude. And you've got pipelines from Kern County going to these refiners to get this crude oil to them. One of the things people are beginning to understand is those pipelines have got to have a minimum of 30% crude oil in them to flow. If they don't, they shut down. We are getting close to the point where they will shut down. Now you may have crude oil, but you have no way to get it to the refiners. So this is a critical point that the governor has to address and that we hope the Energy Commission addresses with him in their response due July 1st. That is not a tomorrow issue. That is not a two year issue. That's not a five. That is a today issue. Right. So that has got to be fixed urgently.